Good evening and welcome to 2020. Well, it coats the pots you cook with so the food doesn't stick. It protects the carpet your baby crawls on. You may also have it in your winter jacket, your skin lotion, even your makeup. We're talking about Teflon. And tonight, a 2020 investigation uncovers alarming information about this much-used material. It is very alarming, Barbara. I cook with Teflon. I didn't know until I watched this report that you're about to see that if Teflon gets hot enough, depends on what you're cooking or how long you leave the pot on the stove, it gives off fumes that can kill birds and make us feel as if we have the flu. Some fear an ingredient used to make Teflon may do even worse things. Chief Investigative Correspondent Brian Ross checked it out. For the parents of the groom, this happy day was one they feared might never come, given how their son started life. He was born January the 15th, 1981. Sue Bailey's son was born with only one nostril and a deformed right eye. And the doctors told us not to get attached to him because he probably wouldn't make it through the night. What did the doctor say to you about his condition? They didn't know what to say. No one know, knew what to say. I mean, they had never seen a baby like this before. I cried so many tears, I couldn't cry another tear. That was 22 years ago. And now Bucky Bailey, scarred from more than 30 surgeries, is coming forward, telling 2020 he wants to know who or what was responsible for a life that has not been easy. I've never, ever felt normal. You can't feel normal when you walk outside and every single person looks at you. And it's not that look of, oh, he's famous or he's rich. It's that look of he's different. And you can see it in their eyes. This is where the Baileys and others lay the blame. The place where Sue Bailey worked when she became pregnant. The huge DuPont plant in Parkersburg, West Virginia place where they mixed the chemicals for a product advertised as making life easier. Teflon, the famed non-stick surface on pots and pans, in a different form used to keep stains off carpets and clothing, what DuPont calls the housewife's best friend. Cooking without Teflon just isn't any fun. A two billion dollar a year business all based on chemicals including a chemical now linked to cancer, organ damage, and other health effects in tests on laboratory animals. The same chemical that was not only in the blood of Bucky Bailey's mother, but, it turns out, in the blood of virtually every American in small but detectable levels that make this a story that goes far beyond what happened in one town in West Virginia. In retrospect, this may seem like one of the biggest, if not the biggest, mistakes the chemical industry has ever made. Jane Houlihan and Chris Thayer of the Environmental Working Group, an activist organization, have been poring over 20 years' worth of industry and DuPont confidential documents on Teflon. And how could they not be in our blood? They're in such a huge range of consumer products. We're talking about Teflon, Stainmaster, Gore-Tex, Silverstone. So if you buy clothing that's coated with Teflon or something else that protects it from dirt and stains, those chemicals can absorb directly through the skin. According to the federal government, some of the highest blood levels were found in a nationwide sample of children. And even DuPont says it cannot rule out that Teflon-connected products, such as its Stainmaster carpet treatment, give off the chemical although at blood levels, DuPont says, are far too small to be a problem. We are confident when we say that the facts, the scientific facts, demonstrate that the material is perfectly safe to use. Uma Chowdhury, a vice president of research, is the DuPont executive chosen to publicly defend Teflon, the company's most valuable brand name. She says Teflon is completely safe even if the key chemical is in everyone's blood. Everyone has it. Everyone has it. It's in my blood, your blood? Possibly. We do not believe there are any adverse health effects. Is it a good thing use. to have it in your blood? There are lots of chemicals that are present in our blood. But the unexpected discovery of the almost universal contamination of human blood from the Teflon chemical called C8, combined with worrisome laboratory studies, has now led to a high-priority federal investigation of the chemical's risks. 
It's a potential threat, and EPA is moving fast in studying this. Human blood levels are too close to the levels that harm lab animals. That's why they're moving fast. But the Environmental Working Group says there's another, more immediate health problem from Teflon. It's heating up pretty rapidly in this first few minutes. Involving, as they showed us in the kitchen, the mix of chemicals from Teflon. We're at 480. They can make you sick, cause a kind of two-day Teflon flu if a nonstick pan gets overheated, starting around 500 degrees. 560? 560 at 554 degrees Fahrenheit. Studies show that ultra-fine particles start coming off the pan. These are tiny little particles that can embed deeply into the lungs. It feels like the flu, headache, chills, backache, temperature between 100 and 104 degrees. The hotter it gets, the more chemicals are released. And at 680, six toxic gases can begin to come off of heated Teflon. And it turns out this Teflon flu is something DuPont has known about for years. You get some fumes, yes, and it, you get a flu-like symptom, which is reversible. And if you follow the instructions on you, the pan... You feel like you have the flu? You feel like you have the flu temporarily. Now how long does that last? Temporary. A couple of days. A couple of days. Couple of days. That's temporarily. Yeah. DuPont says pans don't get hot enough with normal cooking to present a problem. We're at 500. But this bacon was just getting crisp when the Teflon pan went past the initial danger point of 500 degrees. This is a temperature DuPont has said is never exceeded under normal cooking conditions in the home. We cook some bacon above 500 degrees. The bacon still wasn't done. I've never cooked bacon. I can't comment. The Environmental Working Group has tried without success to get the government to order a warning put on the labels of nonstick pans. On this pan, the label says only that high heat will damage or discolor the pan. I think that our viewers would be surprised to know that there is such a thing as this fume fever. It's on our website, always has been. But not on the actual product. The manufacturer of Teflon pans does not put it on the product. One consumer warning DuPont does issue about Teflon fumes involves not humans, but birds. Overheated Teflon pans will actually kill birds. I didn't smell anything. I didn't see any smoke. Shelby Greenman says her pet bird, a two-foot-high cockatoo, in a cage down the hall from the kitchen, keeled over after all the water boiled out of a nonstick pan. As soon as they inhale it, it's over. There's nothing we can do to help them. Pet bird groups say thousands of birds have been killed by Teflon fumes. Something DuPont says occurs because birds have small and sensitive lungs. In West Virginia, they used to use birds in coal mines as a warning of problems. Is this not the same thing? I'm sorry. People should not, the, people should not have birds in an unventilated kitchen. But if it will kill a bird, wouldn't it at the very least do some harm to a tiny baby? There is no evidence that it causes harm. But as a scientist, doesn't that seem logical to you? I don't think you can compare birds and babies. But in the end, the greatest concern about Teflon is possible long-term harm to a generation that is growing up around Teflon products. If you have neighbors like DuPont, you won't need no enemies. And scientists say if there is any long-term harm, the first place to look would be at the people who have had the greatest exposure to the key chemical used to make Teflon. <laughs> the people who work and live and drink the water near the DuPont Teflon plant in West Virginia, including Deborah Cochran and her family. Everybody knows it's there, they know it's in the water, but nobody seems to know what to do about it. That's my favorite. <laughs> But now a lawsuit brought by local residents, including the family of Bucky Bailey, accuses DuPont of trying to cover up what it knew about Teflon's risks. Back to the year Bucky Bailey was born 22 years ago. I'm angry that it wasn't stopped in 1981 when they knew about it, that it went on. Perhaps most telling, these internal DuPont documents only now made public showed the company knew that of eight women working on the Teflon line in 1981, two had children with birth defects. Not just Bucky Bailey's mother, but another mother who 2020 was also able to locate. Her son, too, had a birth defect involving the eye. DuPont should be held accountable for their actions in keeping all this secret 
from the public. Karen Robinson, now a grade school principal, says she only recently found out that she had an extremely high level of the Teflon chemical C8 in her blood when she was pregnant. And she fears her second child also was affected. I gave birth to a daughter two years ago. We discovered that she has a birth defect that affects her kidneys. One kidney did not grow. One kidney grew to three times its normal size. DuPont denies he was trying to cover up what happened to the children of Karen Robinson or Sue Bailey. It says the reason it didn't disclose the birth defect study to the government for 22 years was that it found nothing to connect the defects with the Teflon chemical. And DuPont continues to insist it's safe for its workers to handle it. And what I'm saying to you is that in the general population, incidences of birth defects are not uncommon. Two out of eight workers is not uncommon? This was not a statistically valid sampling. You study eight women who work with C8. Two of them had children with birth defects. That would not be significant? We have had scientists pore over the data. In the realm of scientific fact, this is not considered a statistically significant sample. All the other children were normal. And since then, we have not seen a preponderance of birth defects. Have you done a study to see? No, we have not. Those studies are finally happening. But Bucky Bailey and his family and others say, why did it take so long? Now, 22 years later, what happened to Bucky Bailey has become part of the federal government's high priority review of whether the Teflon chemical that's in everyone's blood is safe. I have to think about if I want to have children or not. And I cannot put them through what I went through. So the big question is, should you throw out your Teflon and other nonstick cookware? At this point, the federal government is saying, no, you shouldn't. It's conducting a major investigation right now. The results are expected in the coming months, and we'll be staying on top of that story. In the meantime, some suggestions. Don't let your Teflon pots burn or the liquid in them boil away. And don't leave an empty Teflon pot on high heat. We'll be right back.